Hello everyone and welcome back to our building simulation game. In this game tutorial we are going through the process of setting up our own sort of factory creation simulation game where we can place blocks, collect them up and start making stuff out of them. So up till now we've worked on our system to be able to choose a block and place it in our world. And that costs ingredients. So now we're going to work on actual specific blocks in here and how to link them all up and work together. So we're going to start things off with power generation and specifically we're going to do a solar panel. Now solar panels are pretty simple. All they do is they generate power if they can see the sun or see the sky at least. Okay. So we're going to go to our placeable block, which is our parent block here. Right click on this and create a child blueprint class. I'm going to call this one power underscore solar. I'm going to open it up. And I'm just going to change the mesh to be a little bit dis different. And we can use a cylinder. And then click compile. Go to your class defaults. And here you want to define the block row name. So this would be what is used to get the data that is required from the data table. So here I'm going to call this one power underscore solar. And leave it like that. Hit compile. And close out. Then we have to go to our block data table. So every time we make a new block, we need a new block data table row. So make a new row. And this name here has to match what we've done with our block. So power solar. Then we can fill out details. So the name of this block will be called solar panel. Uh, I haven't got a thumbnail yet, so leave that blank. Description. This cheap uh, form of clean energy. Uh, is easy to build and cheap to run but not the most powerful way to generate power and then we need to find the ingredients so I'm going to click on the plus icon here and let's say it needs uh, metal we'll say it needs three metal and some glass so glass and requires a five glass. The block class for this will choose from the drop down that new power solar block we just made. Hit save and you can close this. Now glass is a new material, so we're going to go into item data table and we're going to add a new row to this one. And the row name here is going to be glass and item name is going to be glass. And if you had a mesh, we don't have yet one, and thumbnail, we don't yet have one, we'll leave that as it is. Okay, so now we've got a power block. So if I was to push play, you can now see solar panel is in uh, our, our, one of our options in our list here. Can't choose it yet because we haven't got enough glass because we don't have any glass in our inventory. So let's just give us some default glass to start off with. So let's go to my first person character. And in my inventory component, I'm going to click on add and type in glass. And from here, we'll want to add in, uh, let's say, let's give us, let's start with 20, 20 glass. Hit play, choose solar panel, and there's our solar panel block, which is a cylinder. Click and place that into the world, like so. Okay, so that's how we place the solar panel and how we create new blocks in, uh, in general. So how about actually making it start generating power? So that we're going to go on to our polar power solar panel option here. So open up the full blueprint editor for it. And we want it to continuously check if it can see the sky. Now we want to slow down the tick on this. We don't want to do it all the time. So we're going to say it generates power every so often via this tick up here in the class defaults. So tick, we're going to change from the default setting of zero to ticking every let's say three seconds okay so we'll do compile and now we can work on our stuff here so the event tick is what we want to use and that means it's going to do its thing every three seconds so from here we'll do a simple line trace up into the sky so line trace by channel and the start point is going to be the actor's location so get actor location and then the end point is going to be directly above the actor's location. So get the actor's location, add a vector, 
and we're going to add a very large number to the Z here. We'll do 1000 and place that into the end. Excellent. Okay. So if this return value returns false, we want it to generate power. So we'll do return node, place that in like so, and hit compile. And next we want to have a uh, value in here to store the amount of power this thing is generating. So under variables here, we're gonna click on new variable. And new variable here, we're gonna do um, current energy. We're good, the current stored energy, sorry. Energy. And that'll be a float. And we, next one we'll do maximum uh, storage, stored energy. And we'll leave the rest of it for now. Um, so what we're gonna do in here is on the branch, if this is false, i.e. we haven't hit anything in the sky, we, that means we can see the sky and generate some more energy. So we're gonna get the current stored energy and add a new float to it. And then set the current stored energy to the false. So the amount of energy we wanna add is what we type in here. So for this thing, we are gonna actually make a new variable here. And this would be um, energy gained per tick. And we'll compile that and plug that into our addition. So energy gain per tick, we can now define a default value over here uh, on the right hand side to be whatever we want here. So if I change this to say 2.5, there's our energy gained per tick. And if you want to randomize that, we can do. We can take this and do random uh, int, uh, random float in range, sorry. And we'll say the minimum is. Um, the gained minus one, for example, and the max is going to be plus one. So you've got a little bit of variation as it generates energy. Okay. And this could be affected by things like weather, if you have a weather system, day night cycle, and so on and so forth. So that'll do for that. And to see what it's doing, we'll just do a print string and print out the energy that we're gaining. So now push play and let's do this. So tab, check solar panel, and you can now see one little issue is that it's generating power already before I've even placed it, okay, which isn't exactly what we want. So how do we fix that? Well, when we build a new block, in placeable block here, um, we have the option to determine whether or not it's been placed. Okay, so when it's placed, we want it to start triggering that information. So let's go into our solar panel and let's call the parent class of placed. So call up placed, event placed, then right click on this and add call the parent function. That allows you to call the same stuff that's already on the parent there. So once it's placed, we want to trigger when event tick can be happening. So on the variables here, we'll do a new variable. In fact, actually, we won't do that. We'll do, actually, we'll go back to our placeable block and go to variables, add a new variable here. And we'll do this one as placed. Uh, oh, so we got is placed. Okay, and we'll set that to true at the end of the placed function or event. Okay, so placed, we'll call the material, set the collision, and change this boolean. Then on polar so power solar, we don't need the event anymore because we can just use the is placed boolean, which is get, and put that into a branch before the tick does its job. So now, before it does the calculation for the sky, we're just going to check whether or not we actually have placed it. So now if I push play, you see it's not generating any power yet until I place it, and then it'll start generating power. So it's got 2.19 power, then 5.3, 7.2, and 
and so forth. And it will keep generating power infinitely. But we don't want it to do it infinitely. So the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to clamp it based on the maximum stored energy. So before we do the set current stored energy, we're going to take our float calculation here and drag our maximum stored energy out and choose get. And from the addition here, we're going to clamp this out with a clamp float. And the minimum will be zero. The maximum note is going to be our maximum stored energy variable. So you drag up and then plug the rest of it into our current stored energy. So all we have to do now is compile, go to a maximum stored energy variable and set the default value to what is going to be the maximum energy this thing can store before it stops adding any more information to it. So I'm going to start off at 10. Compile, close this, and finally just test this out. Place that down and let's see this thing generate its power. And when it reaches 10, it should clamp, clamp out at 10 and stop growing. There you go, 10. So it will no longer gain any more extra energy, which is what we want. Okay, so that will do it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll make a little inventory, uh, not sorry, inventory, a user interface, sorry, uh, where if we interact with a block, we can see the details of the block. So in this case, we'll see the amount of power this thing has, how much it has stored, and what is its rate of energy. So join us in the next episode when we go through how to create that user interface element. And we'll do that in the next episode. And episodes after that, we'll start showing how to divert that power to other blocks to power them up. So join us in the future episodes right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can watch all my episodes before anyone else, all from just $1 a month. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. None of this would be possible without you guys, so thank you again so, so much. I really do mean it. Thank you. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll try and answer them as best I can, as quick as I can. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.